And we're back. Hey, everybody. It's Darren Carter, host of the Pocket Party Podcast. And this week, very special guest, Sam Tripoli. Hi, Darren. How are you, brother? I'm great, man. It's good to see you. Podcast, dude. I love it, man. This is, uh, you look great, dude. You go with the full on mohawk. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's like my hair doesn't want to play do it right. I got a <laughs> weird colic in the back. So it's, yeah. it's it's fucking it up. But I said screw it. I miss my mohawk and Rogan just would tell me how stupid I look all the time. So I said, you know what? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back with it and uh, yeah. grab do it. And you know what, man? I'm all about I don't leave the house anymore because I have twin girls. So right, who do right. I got to impress? Yeah, exactly. You're like, let me just kind of, cause it, it is kind of a youthful look. It's like, uh, you know, and you yeah, didn't- for sure. And then I got a gut, which is the worst look ever, a mohawk <laughs> with a gut, but I have lost some weight during this. Uh, I, I'm almost under 200 pounds. Nice. That's good, man. Are you- when I did it, I, I had, I've in my life, I've had a couple pilots, but I only have one show go to a uh, series yeah. And that was uh, my Spike show where I did my own stunts, right? And yeah. uh, by the way, we were the number one rated uh, original programming on Spike. And then they got a new president and then they f- they canceled our show and went with a knockoff. Um, but that was the death of Icon, but that's another uh, conversation. <laughs> but so I, I didn't know we were doing stunts and I learned what a hematoma was uh, and I was what a hem- what's a hematoma? I don't know what that hematoma is. It's like uh, like the super like insane bruise that just swells with blood. Oh wow. You see a lot of like in uh combat sports when they get kicked too much and their leg swells with blood, that's called a hematoma. Oh wow. And I was doing these stunts and getting hematomas and they were just kicking my ass. Uh and I couldn't walk, you know, because I was so beat up and I just gained this like this, this like layer of permafat that I could never get rid of. Yeah. And uh, so if I could get down to 185, that was the way I was when I did that. But I'm, I, I, I think that like there's something like I know you work out a lot and you're doing a great job at it, but there's also something about getting super ripped that says to me like you're starving. Yeah. Yeah, that you're also uh, or super selfish. You know what yeah, I mean? I, like, I, like how are you going to have a six pack and twins? It's like, yeah, come on, yeah, man. Like, well, yeah, you know, I, like that is, yeah. I, I, you know, you have a kid, and uh, there's something as a man that's very freeing about having a child. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like you did your job. Like you were there, you produced more of you, and, <laughs> and it's almost like. It, like a lot of society pressures, I mean, there new pressures show up like providing, which is this innate thing inside you that you get kind of this like rush by <clears throat> providing yeah. for your family. That's it's very weird, but it's very primal as well. But um, but there's something also about having kids that you kind of like don't care anymore what people think. And, exactly. Yeah, right? you're like I find I find myself like a. Uh, Especially when the kid, when, when like, you know, when, when they're, you know, the first couple of years, I found myself like, you know what, I'm going to like use every pocket I have. Cause if I have pockets, I'm going to put stuff in it. Cause you want to have the backup stuff. And, and uh, like we would go to the zoo and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to wear, I'm going to look like a zookeeper and, and wear the hat and just, you know, I, I didn't care. I was like, who cares? You know, yeah, like, it's I'll- very, it's very free. And yes. you're just like, yeah. I, and which makes me laugh because if you watch commercials, they make you think dad's an idiot, couldn't wipe his own butt without mom telling him how to do it, <laughs> yeah. right? But then yeah. you kind of, once you become a father, you realize it's it's almost the exact opposite. It like becomes this very zen thing, at least in my my yeah. uh, experience. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's not per- two twins are just like they run you, dog. Wow, I they can't even imagine. You, but it's, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, it's- dude. Just imagine it. Someone <laughs> described it as uh, uh, just living with two drunk college chicks. One's laughing, <laughs> one's crying. They, get, they don't want to sleep at the same time. One wants to eat, one wants to have fun. And it's just uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I got a couple of questions. I you know I, I I said, hey, do you have any qu- questions for Sam? And and they covered the 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 uh, the gamut. You know, uh, uh, let's let's start out. Um, with a couple of easy questions, uh, you know, my wife's Armenian. I've been married for over 20 years. 
And uh, yeah, and you I, always kill at the Armenian shows. Thank there, you. You're a thank crusher. you. Yeah, man, I, I love it. And uh, um, I had a couple questions. Somebody wanted to know what is your favorite Armenian dish, or do you have a you favorite what, Armenian dude? dish? Uh, or I'm a simple guy. I like chicken kebab, rice pilaf, ba- baklava. Now I have to yeah. I have to be honest with everybody. Like where I grew up, when I grew up, uh, you know, I grew up thinking I was a white guy, and yeah. you know, I still think I'm a white guy until someone tells me you're not white, you're Armenian. And which is very interesting because <laughs> yeah. Armenians come from the Caucasus mountains, which is Caucasian, but we're also part, Armenia is a part of Asia. So I'm also yeah. Asian. It's a trip, right? Like it's uh, yeah. And, 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 um, what, uh, and, and was your, is your mom Armenian? Your father yeah, Armenian? My mom is Armenian. Uh, you know, it's very interesting because when I came out to LA, I just yeah. started identifying with, my Armenian side because the Italian comics were just so Italian. I couldn't <laughs> yeah, exactly compete with that. I, you know, there were Jimmy and Joey, Sebastian Maskelko, which, uh, and then Brett Ernst also there was a, a Mike Marino. They were all great <laughs> comics, but yeah. you know, uh, it was just like, they were super Italian and I'm not, and I'm not even super Armenian either. Like right. I was rejected at first by the Armenian community. I probably <laughs> will be again because I just heard Metzger recently about his joke about the Armenian genocide, which, you know, I get it, man. I get why if you don't understand sarcasm, you could get really upset about that. But, you know, it is what it is. I just, you know, I love the Armenians. They've come a long way, dog, in 20 years they've become very uh, Americanized. When I first got here, it was like they were fresh off the boat and they didn't get anything. Did you ever go up to, uh, did you ever do any Armenian shows up in Fresno? Uh, No, I I don't really like doing any kind of, I I like, I don't even like doing charity shows. Not that I I like to help. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I don't like doing any shows where I can't be myself. And right. Even though I'm a complete and utter, like, I want anarchists and I want to burn everything down. I do really, but I'm very conscious if I'm going into something that where I could like, where I'm just not a right fit. So that's why I like to do my own shows. Yeah. Well, the only reason I asked that is, uh, you know, up, up in Fresno, it's uh, the Armenians are, are a lot of times we're, we're like second generation, third generation. So you'll see like, you know, Armenians up there, like literally like driving John Deere's or Ford's or just more like you wouldn't like, they're just like you. You'd be like, hey, I didn't know you were Armenian except for the IAN last name or the YAN. And dude, if you and, went and yeah. saw most of my family back east, they're white. They're very <laughs> they're Russian Armenians out here. It's Persian Armenians. It's a little you know, bit. So it's, yeah. that's why they all look like uh, uh, vampires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. How are you, uh, before I jump into the questions, like, uh, man, this is, uh, I got to say, this is a wild time. You know, uh, I, I think a lot of people weren't, that were never interested in, 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 in conspiracies. They might've been like, oh, it's those crazy guys about UFOs and Bigfoots. Right, right. Now they're like, you know, going down the, you know, they're, they're, they're watching YouTube documentaries and, and, and watching stuff and wondering like, how did this happen and what's going on and, and what is, you know, someone today sent me something. Um, they, I guess, is it, oh, I might have the facts wrong. Was it the president of Zimbabwe or Tanzania? Something. Yeah, some one of those countries. Do you know about this? About they, yeah, sent they, in a, uh, yes. uh, uh, a COVID uh, yes. coronavirus test on a piece of fruit and yes. animals. A, a papaya, and a goat, some motor oil, and, and the came par- back positive. Yeah, it's like that's. And then he's like, I don't dude, trust your test. This whole thing is just, this whole thing is just ridiculous, dude. And it's just, and it's really sad because th- it, it fell apart so quickly uh, that they're, they did, they're still trying to push something like we're in the middle of this crazy epidemic. And it's, it's, it's just, we're, it's so, we're self sabotaging what's really going on. And you just have people, it's like I tweeted this, like, you know, five years ago, this group of people were telling us, you know, the government is racist. Cops 
cops are murderers for shooting unarmed black people. Uh, my body, my choice. And now it's like, listen to the government. Do what the cops <laughs> yeah. tell you. Take mandatory ma vaccinations. It's like some people would rather uh, rather be right than do right. And that's really the truth in this whole situation. It flipped. It's just flipped. It's it's a it's a. I feel like we're in a twilight zone at times, you know? Uh, oh, hey, dude, if, people always go to me, oh, dude, not everything's a conspiracy. If you really get into it, it really <laughs> is yeah. at, the, at the highest levels we're, because that's the only way it works. They, ha You know, th this whole discussion on who the elites are, you know, it's like uh, George Bush and, and Barack Obama are 10th cousins. And everyone's like, dude, that's a lot of generations, bro. I go, well, you know, I mean, how long, into, how many generations yeah. do you think you and I have to go back before we find a, a, a common, uh, a common in ancestor? It's going to be pretty far back, brother. I guarantee it's way more than 10. <laughs> and it just happens to be that all these guys are all like, when Barack Obama, our first black president, is cousins with George Bush and yeah. Dick Cheney, like, yeah. you're like something's going on here. And here, and then like, Queen Elizabeth comes out that she's distant cousins with the Prophet Muhammad, and you're like, oh, you're all. And yeah. that's when you start asking questions. And my whole thing is this, dude. It's like the world of quote unquote conspiracies, I call them free thinkers. You know, it's so much more exciting than the regular news. I don't know why people wouldn't just go listen because it's so much more yeah. interesting. And it's, people always go, dude, how do you live with it in your head? I go, it's the most peaceful I've ever been. Oh. Because when you know what's really going on, it's my, when you realize it's like it's not half the country versus half the country, and you realize it's a select group of people causing all the chaos, it's easier to sleep at night. It just, yeah. it just is. I explain it as it's kind of like super, the character Super Mario, right? Super Mario, you know, when he was in the, in the video game Donkey Kong, his life was very simple. He was just, you know, <laughs> climbing these stairs to go stop Donkey Kong from banging his girl the whole time, right? Yep. But then at some point he <laughs> evolves and he goes to Super Mario Kart and like the world is so much bigger, man. And that's when you when you enter the world of conspiracies and you get away from just geopolitical stuff. And that yeah. comes when you start looking at like it's so much more than what everybody tells us about. The world is so much more. I have no clue what we live on, dude, but there's a good chance that we are all mortal gods in a realm here to learn lessons mm. on what the universe teaches, and that's to be kind to each other. And if you don't yeah. learn that, you come back until you get it. Right. Oh, dude, I got to I gotta plug myself. I did a, I did a great deed today, and, and I almost – I just feel like I just have to share it because – it, 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 it made me so happy. I was at a stoplight. I look out the window. I see all these credit cards on the ground. And I look and I saw a wallet and I saw cash in the wallet. And I'm in my car. I'm like, what the heck? I hit my hazards, wait till all the cars went by me, got out of my car, gathered all the stuff. I saw the driver's license. It was a lady. I put her address on, on Waze and I realized, oh, she's less than a half mile. I went to her house, honked the horn. As soon as I honked the horn, she ran out. And she goes, please tell me you found my wallet. And I'm like, I found it. And it, it, it made both of us feel great, Sam. Dude, I'm telling you. Yeah. I tell people, man, do three nice things for yep. somebody else a day, not expecting anything in return, and you'll see how your life changes. And it's this weird thing because it, it is. You get a rush off. I actually got a rush off that. Yeah, yeah you feel too. this warm glow turn over you, come over you, and that's the universe rewarding you for what you're supposed to do, which is help others. And that's why we've gotten so far from, from everything. You remember, you know, in the movie, Wall Street, Greed is Good. You know, <laughs> that's just, once again, these very oh, dark yeah. arts people, right, right. you know, not teaching us what's really going on in the world. Yeah. Has there ever been a conspiracy that you were like, oh, this is a conspiracy? And then the more you looked into it, you're like, oh, I, I changed my mind. That's really not a conspiracy. 
Something well, like what that. do you mean by not a conspiracy that didn't happen or, oh, it's really happening, so it's not a conspiracy? I don't know. That was a question someone sent in. They said, uh, let, me, let me read it exactly how they said it. Uh, they said, is there a conspiracy theory that you believed in at first but changed your mind later? Okay, yes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I have a pretty good batting average. I would say it's in the 900s, right, in terms of, like, predicting conspiracies. You know, a lot, you know, we're living in a, a time of what they call nonlinear warfare, which is basically where the powers that be flood us with so much information. And a lot of it's factual, but it's from both sides. So we don't know what's coming or going. So what I usually do is I usually take uh, history as the best we know it. And it's usually not till the event's over and many years later, the truth starts coming out because you know, the people who perpetrated it and society has moved on. There's no real danger in revealing the information. Like when, you know, they basically, you know, Trump basically put out that George Bush Sr. was in the plaza when Kennedy got assassinated and nobody blinked an eye, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Right? So it's like, it's like way after. So, uh, so what I do is I usually take history uh, to the best of we know it. And then I take who gets the money and who gets the power. And if those things line up, you're most likely onto something. And you study this enough, you can actually start predicting what's going to happen. Mm. Um, but the two times I've been wrong, uh, both were sports conspiracies. They weren't political oh. or, you know, uh, ancient knowledge or any, they were sports conspiracy. And the first one, uh, I just found out recently when I thought, uh, that they had caught one of the Houston Astros with a white, the tape from the wire on his chest. And I re later people were like, cause it was there forever, this thing. And I'm like, yeah. who just, and it was Kim confetti. <clears throat> so I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> it was confetti. <laughs> yeah. But, the Houston Astros did cheat. You don't yep. get the owner and all the ball players to basically come out and apologize if they didn't do something. So I was wrong on that, that it wasn't tape. It was, it was confetti. And the second one is I used to really believe that Michael Jordan got suspended for uh, gambling. And I don't believe that anymore based on what I've seen in this last dance. And I know they could manipulate that, but I do really do believe that. He was just so overwhelmed. I, mm. You know, there's people like him. And like, I think about, like, Joe Rogan and how much, like, that guy has on his plate. And me and my little universe, sometimes I feel very um, yeah, yeah. overwhelmed. I couldn't imagine what those guys go through and how they mentally can keep the trains on the track. So I could understand why he quit and uh, – yeah, I was wrong on that. Hey, speaking of Michael Jordan, I actually have this in my notes. I love this thing. Sometimes you say this sometimes. Do you have any idea where I'm going with this about being the Michael Jordan of something that hasn't been invented? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, love yeah. That. I love that. Yeah. I talk about how, like, what if you're the Michael Jordan of something that hasn't been invented yet? Yes. Like, how, you, you know, like, maybe you're the greatest time traveling hopscotcher in the world you <laughs> right. can hopscotch between yeah. time like no one else but because it hasn't been invented yet you now you're just a stoner that sits on the fucking couch all day and <laughs> yeah. watch like uh what's it called british the great oh, british yeah. bake-off have you been watching that at all on netflix no, no. is it amazing it, it, <laughs> it is amazing and I, and I got a new podcast called broken simulation and I'm going to be talking about it on that, on this, on that. But it is amazing because the British are very unique looking. Okay, they're not what we what we would say traditional Hollywood attractive. Right. Occasionally yeah. they get that, but yeah. they're really not. They're very much like character actor looking right. people. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you know <laughs> that they're talented because. <laughs> They're not shiny objects. And that's yeah. why I love the British entertainment because you're like, okay, that you got to be good to get on TV. <clears throat> yeah. It's not just being symmetrical like here at the U in the United States. And the episode we're watching right now, one of the 
one of the people has like a clubbed hand. Oh, and wow. they never mention it yeah. ever on the show. And <laughs> Martha tells me it's because she requested not that them not to talk about that. But the truth of the matter is, is like if the United if that happened in the United States, uh, you know, that's all they would talk about. And that, right. that woman would win it because dude, you can't compete in talent shows against children and handicapped people. Right. They should have their own like competition, like trans athletes, right? Have you seen like trans <laughs> yeah. chicks are just whooping biological chicks and everyone? Oh, and, like a totally. bunch of people are, like, no, it's totally normal. You're like, what are you talking about? No, and I feel bad for those female athletes, right? They they want to get the scholarships and go to college, and then the the you know the trans athlete comes yeah, along. All I have to say to them is, them and- just let the alpha males know when you need us to come set everything straight. <laughs> you you made this bed now sleep in it, ladies. Okay, yeah. you shit yeah. on guys forever. Now deal with it. Yeah, yeah. right. It's like yeah. it's so funny. Women hate men. Women are like, yeah, guys are. Uh, women and men are equal. Yeah, and then men become women and whoop their ass. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Uh, I got another one. I'm going to set you up with another softball question. Um, how do you feel about male feminists who put it in their bio online? <laughs> uh, I'll fight all of them. There's like, dude. You yeah. Know, in, in the conspiracy community, there yeah. there is a, a faction of these people mm. that are very homophobic mm. and they're very anti-Semitic. Mm. And uh, I can't stand that shit. I don't, I don't work hard to, you know, free the masses. And I'm nobody. I'm just a multi-layered dick joke comic uh, who does a conspiracy podcast. But I don't work as hard as I do. To you know, it's like Lincoln said about the Federal Reserve. He's not going to free some men and enslave others. So, I'm very much uh, against bigotry. Uh, I I think it's a class war, not a, a race or a gender or a sexual preference, but a, a class war. But uh, male feminists are the only group that I hate on a. <laughs> yeah, I hate. Oh, and there she this is. This is Ghost. Hi, Ghost. How do how do you go to this to this? How do you do that? <laughs> how do you? Yeah. Are how are do you there? Do that? Is Ghost the, are, is that their real name or the nickname or the public name or? Well, uh it is their their middle name and their 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 internet name. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. their middle name. They have a full name. Yeah. And daddy says weird stuff, so I want them to get to an age. And if they want to be put out the real name, they can. But I guarantee you they will go by their names, which are legally uh, Ghost and Ninja Triple. <laughs> That's awesome. It's uh, it Man, I remember that was one of the fun things about being a dad and a new parent. You're like, what are we going to name our kid? And you start, you, just, you start just, what am I? You going through the list of what you want, what you don't like, what you like. We almost I actually won't. do a joke about yeah. it now yeah, yeah. about how, you know, you, it's very difficult to name daughters. I think got boys yeah. are a little easier because, you know, you'll go by, you know, your dad, your grandpa, someone, a male figure you love sports athletes, uh, your favorite character. There's so much to choose from. Girls are very different <laughs> because you can't use any of the names of any female that's pissed off the your, the mom, right? Yeah, exactly. Which is every woman she's ever met, <laughs> right? And then you can't go use any names of any <clears throat> adult film stars you've ever watched right, in pornography, right. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you whittled it down, we were stuck with Ghost and Ninja. Those are the only <laughs> two names left on the list. That's cute. That's amazing. We were almost going to name our son because my wife was, you know, raised on a farm. We were almost going to name our son Cotton. Cotton. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Cotton Carter. Yeah. It's gotten weird because it's now like, now it's like back when I was young, everyone used to make funny jokes about black people naming their kids weird. Yeah. And now like white people are full on going bizarro with it. Yeah. Like, it's it's yeah. like, they're just about in 10 years. It's just going to be sound effects. I think Dane Cook does a joke about that. I just realized that. But it's just going to be weird. It's like totally fuck. It's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just getting weirder and weirder and weirder, you know? Yeah. 
Um, I, heard, I heard you go. Okay. So I listened to your podcast recently with uh, um, Eddie Bravo. And it was interesting because I don't know when you recorded that. Maybe it was. A it was weeks. Uh, last Tuesday. So it wasn't even that long ago. And you guys, and, and I'm, I'm not too much into politics. Uh, I, and, and that's kind of where we keep our podcast. But I got to say, having you on, I want to just hear these conspiracies. Because on that podcast, you said something like, if Michael Flynn, he might get exonerated. And then as yeah. I'm listening to it, I'm like, wow, that just came out that he got exonerated. Like, yeah. and you guys were like, and then this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And, oh, and yeah. you guys, you guys have been right about a lot of things. So dude, yeah. Uh, the show has been on a four year fucking, uh, uh, winning streak, you know? Uh, well, actually it's about three and a half years old and, uh, we've been on a winning streak. You know, we don't, we have these rules of the Ronin and they're very, sometimes I, uh, you know, you try your best to follow them. It's very hard, but the rules of the Ronin is, uh, uh, we are part of, uh, we don't support anyone we don't personally know. We're part of no group. Uh, we defend no action. We weren't personally a part of making, uh, we do not give knowledge to those who do not seek it and we right the wrongs. And the question is, you know, I always get people, Oh, uh, you know, um, Three, like five and two are, uh, you know, uh, they, you know, they, they, they don't uh, go together and it's like, well, <laughs> then you don't get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the point is that, and you know, I kind of, without getting too political, it's just like, if you don't get into identity politics, it's yep. very easy to see what's going on. Well, her, and yeah, I, I guess interrupt you real quick. Cause I got to say this. I love that you guys said something like on one of your episodes, you were like, who are your four, uh, who, are, who are your Mount Rushmore of worst presidents? And you guys right away, you guys named somebody. I was, I don't even, I don't really follow politics, but you, I think you both said Wilson. And I was Woodrow like, wow. Wilson. yeah, I was like, how do they even know that? And then I was like, well, maybe that's what I'm saying. It's a little bit interesting. I want to now. I want to do some research and find out why people would think he's a bad president. But what I'm saying is, you know, you guys didn't well, just go with like... he gave us the Federal yeah. Reserve. It was not voted on. And then oh. he gave us uh, personal income tax. Again, not voted on. Yeah. And uh, so he did it in Christmas Eve when everyone's home like a thief in the night. Mm. And, uh, you know... Wow, Christmas Whatever Eve. you think Trump is, like, he supposedly federalized the Federal Reserve. Like, people don't realize yeah. that the Federal Reserve was, in fact... Uh, 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 was not part of the U.S. government, and neither is the IRS. They are they are privately owned comp yeah. uh, corporations, and they are uh, re most likely owned by someone called the Passar family. And nobody knows about who the Passars are, but they basically own um, the majority stock in at least three hundred of the top five hundred corp. Uh, uh, Fortune 500 companies. Uh, they own the Fe the New York Federal Reserve, and I mean they own all the train systems. They they own pretty much everything, wow. and nobody knows that, and nobody hears about it. They have children that they don't even register. They're unknown, and mm -hmm. they're basically French nobility. And you know this is how unknown they are. I didn't find out about them till I was 47 years old. <laughs> wow dang okay so back back to um uh what is, if you could explain to our listeners what does this mean like if uh michael flynn gets exonerated like who yeah well basically uh the the whole russia gate is tied in to michael flynn you know was talking to the russians on behalf of uh, donald trump to influence the election and they hey, dude it's all falling apart like yeah. badly and we're following and you know it's very interesting because we th these people just wasted two years three years i mean comey basically testified that the fbi hadn't at all examined any of the servers and what people don't understand is the gentleman who ran crowdstrike was robert Mueller's it security guy and they just told the FBI that it was Russian hacks. And wow. it wasn't. And people have come out and said <clears throat> that. And what, now that that's out of the way, all roads lead to Debbie Wasserman Schultz putting a hit out on uh, Seth Rich 
and taking her, taking him out by hiring two MS-13 guys. It's called Gangs for Security uh, to kill Seth Rich. And now those two gang members are dead as well. Wow. Man, that's, that's, that's crazy. Do you, um, any Listen, prediction? Dude, yeah. If anyone ever tells you yeah. that, that we would be in a much better place if, if, if Hillary Clinton had won, ask them, do you think Hillary Clinton would arrest Jeffrey Epstein? And the no. answer is no. 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 Do you think she would arrest Nexium? The answer is no. Do you think she would get in trade wars with China? The answer, and we could just keep <laughs> yeah, going. Bro. Right. If she was president when this pandemic happens, brother, we would be in such bad places. She would revoke our Second Amendment rights, our First Amendment rights. And just look at what all the Democrat states are doing right now and how bad it's gotten economically for people yeah. in, this, in this state. We live in Los Angeles. The mayor of this town is telling us we most of our people can't go to work, but he's openly talking about having to get the ne- the the studios up and running in production. So mm-hmm. why can these giant production companies get the work like Amazon, right. uh, Target, Walmart, Home but the Depot, mom and pop yeah. stores? Right. And I know. Studying that, dude, you start realizing that it's not about a virus. I know. There was a little, uh, in my hometown of Fresno, I saw on the local news, there was a Waffle House and and these people wanted to support the restaurant and this cop came in and, and detained this one 70-something-year-old man and uh, the 70-year-old man goes, you know, the cop said, move, and I said, no, and he goes, that was the wrong thing to say, and he put me in handcuffs and the guy Violating goes- Violating his First Amendment rights. Yeah, he goes, you know, I, I have seven kids and at one point in my life, I, I remember like, losing a job and, and being scared about where my money is going to come from. So he goes, that's why we wanted to support this business. And uh, it actually warmed my heart to see them supporting this waffle business. Oh, dude, and, he's uh, not going to get it. Dude, that, that guy, that would yeah. be the worst PR machine. See, dude, they have the right to rule when they yeah. rule us right. Right. They, they're not. And Gavin Newsom's a piece of shit. Uh, this this sheriff who decided that he is above the Constitution. Mm. And, it's, dude, dude, it's a wonderful time to be alive. The truth is more viable than ever. They're never going to be able to put the, 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 the cap back in the bag. And mm. all these people that want to be like, oh, I learned a new term today, OTL, uh, obey the law. They want to be OTL? <laughs> Go do yeah. be OTL. But yeah. I, you know, I have rights as an American, and I'm going to exercise those rights. And dude, it's hilarious that you're from Fresno because I can remember I have two gigs in my 25 <laughs> years Uh-oh. that stands out yeah. as the worst gigs I've ever performed in my I life. Know. <laughs> one was at the Liquid Zoo, and the other one was in Fresno. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, the other one was in Fresno, wow. and uh, it was at a, a show called. Uh, no admission, free beer. No cover, <laughs> free beer. Uh, no, excuse me. Oh, wow. No cover, free pizza. And we went there, and, man, I mean, first of all, I don't know what was going on in Fresno <laughs> at that point, yeah. but everybody was tweaking balls on meth. <laughs> and then we walk into the establishment, and they have a disco ball <laughs> that's going. And I go, you've got to turn off the disco ball. It's hitting everybody in the eyes, and they can't focus on the comedy. They're like, if we turn the disco ball off, all the power in the place goes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, I was, and, and it was just it was the Monsters of Comedy tour, and it was the worst gig I've ever done in my life. Dude, uh, I started there. Imagine starting in that town. I mean, my first two years, I was like, it, it was unbelievably difficult, like it is anywhere. But at the same time, I'm like, I couldn't believe it when I went to a place where people would actually listen. I was like, wow, this is way yeah, different from I mean, Fresno. I started in Vegas. I, I basically created the Vegas, the Las Vegas comedy scene. When I started... I, uh, there's one open mic every other week. And then, you know, I built my uh, up. I just started cause you know, you hear about New York city in New York, they get like nine to spots a night. You're like, Oh fuck. I gotta get up more. Yeah. 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 I started creating my own comedy shows every night. And this is how we did it. And 
You know, it, it, it was, it's a great comedy scene now. Back then, it was like dog shit. Mm. And it just like, and then you come to LA and you're like, this is great. But I feel <laughs> like LA's starting to get bad too. You yeah. know, there's not a lot of spots left. You know, the same eight people <clears throat> in spots. Yeah. Who knows how it's going to be after this? I don't know. I have no idea. You know, none of us do. I'll, I'll tell you this though. I'm reading this book about the history of comedy and they were talking about like after the depression, a lot of comedians made that transition to radio, which is kind of what we're doing. You know, like they were still able to reach their fans. Darren, hold stuff on one out second. There. Hold on one second. Okay, sure. Should I keep talking or? Um, so I'll just keep talking. I don't know how long this will be. And they would, the a lot of those comedians, because, you know, there was the Great Depression. So they had like these giant theaters, like the Orpheum Theater or whatever they were called back then. And it would it would seat 1500 people, but there was no money. The people don't have any money. So they come out and there would literally be like 12 people in the audience. It's so so comedians started transitioning over to radio and they Darren, were uh, it's so funny. Like, yeah, I haven't seen this kid in like what? Five minutes. And then you see your kid again and you're like, Oh my God, I forgot how much I love you. <laughs> it's so weird, man. Is people that, don't understand. Like, I don't remember yeah. a time. When they weren't here, and they've only been here three months, man. I've been around the the the, the sun forty seven times. Wow! I've been here three months, and I'm like, I don't remember you not being. I know you weren't here in 1985, but I can't <laughs> remember it. It's great, man. Like my son is 12, and I just every time, you know, they they're just gonna do little things that you're like you said you haven't seen before. Like the first time they grab a blanket and pull it towards them, you're like, wow. Oh, like oh yeah there's every just day all you, those little at things this age that, yeah. man you wake up and it's like they yeah. just downloaded a new operating system every yep. day you're like yep. oh now you're clocking me now you're looking at me now she's holding her little baba she loves her, <laughs> her little baba and you're like my god it's so it's fun to watch and it you know it you know being a dad it's let me see what i'm good at and what i need to work on and like you just want to do the best you can and uh, it's just fun, dude. But going back to what you were saying as yeah. I got up, I'm sorry about that, about move to radio. Uh, I'm like the Harriet Tubman of comedians in that I try <laughs> yeah. to get all my friends who I love to understand that they got to take control of their life. <sighs> yeah. And I, through content creating. And like, dude, you know what, man? Some days I get frustrated. I've had moments where I'm like, oh, dude, what do I got to do to get those Theo Vaughn numbers, dog, you know, and it's up, it can get to you, but then you just gotta be like, you know, what, man, uh, I'm working hard, I'm doing well. I mean, everybody could always do better, but if you chase that carrot, it's gonna drive you crazy. You just gotta be really yeah. happy with where you are in your life, and but you will, have to do yeah, it, yeah, dude. It's great. Every, every, and every now and then, I'll, I'll need like a, a pick me up, so I'll call you, and you'll be like, dude, just keep doing it, you're doing good, you're doing good, and you're right, my YouTube numbers are going up a little bit, and it's like. It's exciting. I remember when you tweeted out, like, I finally got 50,000 YouTube subscribers. And the last I checked, you were way beyond 50,000. So you're getting up there. I'm at 95. At, once I hit 100,000, if I if YouTube ever lets me, yeah, I, I'm going to stop worrying about numbers. Yes. This is just kind yeah. of like, oh, I just wanted that. And I'm super thankful for it. And it's just, it, I, I just love it, dude. And it's just like, I have my own pirate ship. And, you know, through Tinfoil Hat, which is mostly conspiracies, but I occasionally like to do little things to help people understand that, yes, you know, I am in Hollywood, but I, I could be doing this from somewhere. I could do this from anywhere in the United States. They just have to do it. And maybe, just maybe, you got to do it. You know, my mother raised two kids worked at the day during the day and went to night school and she did all that and she just did it. So we just, you know, sometimes we just got to, you know, we can sleep when we're dead. That's we yeah. can sleep when we're dead. So let's just rock and roll right now. Did, did you, um, I, 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 I think you got taken off one of the platforms for like yeah, a week YouTube or something. Took me down for selling boner pills. Wow. And how long did that happen? Well, they gave it back after about a week and a half. And, you know, and the, the channel's never really recovered to back where it was. And 
I don't know under the current uh, state of affairs if it will ever get back to that. Yeah. You know, and there's some people, I don't know, man. It just seems like I used to get like, I used to have like 70,000 subscribers and I got up to 50,000 views, which is like insane numbers. Yeah. And now it's like 95,000 subscribers, 20,000 uh, views. And like, I'm thankful for anything, you know, yeah. dude, but it definitely seems like they're, they're, they're messing, they're jacking my swag. But, you know, it's what can you do, dude? So I started yeah. another channel, and I'm just trying to build that. And, you know, you just roll with the punches, brother. But, that you know, been, that, my that, Patreon. That, that week know? and a half must have felt like, damn. Like, like especially the first couple of days, like, what happened? Like, am I ever – and then, yeah. But you got it back, though, so that's good news. You got well, it back. The thing is and, this that yeah. people say. It's, they're like, YouTube, uh, you know, it's a private business, and they can do whatever they want to the problem is that they were started with CIA fund money. So it, it's actually a, a, a government funded corporation. Mm. Okay. And uh, it's just the truth. And all these tech companies for the most part are like the whole story about Facebook and the Facebook movie. That was just a, a bold face mm. bullshit. With the Winklevoss Dude, twins. Yeah. Have you, yeah, that, yeah. Have you noticed how they're the first ever Bitcoin billionaires? Do you notice that? <laughs> how convenient is that? Oh, you man. know, it's amazing when you play ball with the CIA, how you become a billionaire. And you see that happen a lot. And uh, so it's like there was something called uh, Life Lock. It's called Life Lock. It was a Pentagon program in which this, the government could collect all your data from all your life, right? Right? So yeah. that program ended, I believe it's February 4th, 2004. Do you know what day Facebook was established? Uh-oh. When? February 4th, 2004. <laughs> Oh, oh, I thought of this right now. Earlier, we were talking about presidential stuff and Hillary Clinton. Um, I think I think it's kind of what do you think was on those computers that she destroyed? You, it's uh, I well, do there's they, a couple they, different computers. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the truth is this, brother. Some, yeah. There is this belief. There's this thing called QAnon, right? Q Anonymous. Heard of and it? People yeah. People debate. Some people call the government psyop. I don't know, man. All I know is that the information I've gotten from it is real. Whatever the information means. Oh, uh, babe. I have one daughter that hates getting naked and I love it. It's like, <laughs> daddy loves that. Keep your clothes on. Okay. No need to take them off. The library like a nice virgin nun would. Okay. Um, so, so it's a Q anonymous. Now people will tell you, Oh dude, it's been debunked. Oh, it's just something to placate people. So they don't attack Trump, whatever it is. dude. Now, listen, there's no such thing as reality, Darren. There's only perception right now. There's a thousand things going on between you and me. What we focus on becomes our reality. Do you understand? And that's yeah. what the, that's the, basically the law of attraction. That's the, the law of positive thinking. If you only focus on the negative, negative shit happens. If yep. you only po focus on the positive, okay, positive shit will happen. Sorry about this. They love podcasting. They love it. I hear you. They love it. So, so cool. there's this. So, if enough people believe in something, dude, it becomes real. Yeah. Okay. If enough people believe in something, that's the great thing about religion, right? If enough people believe in religion, that it becomes real, that God becomes real. So enough, whatever happened, dude, with, let's say, the Internet, right? The whole theory is that they create the Internet so they could get the propaganda out. But I think it's got away, away from them that these really smart nerds and virgins decided that they needed to do something that, and they created – you know, really, you know who created the, the internet, brother? Porn companies and nerds, okay? That's who created <laughs> the internet, and it got away from the government, in my honest opinion, Yeah. okay? That's the same thing, I think, with this QAnon. It's like, and you know, Trump, Trump was seen as, like, this maverick. And I'm going to tell you something, dude. 
there is something to that. Now, uh, am I saying Trump is uh, walks on water? Not at all. I, but I'm telling you, there's things Trump does that I, I really enjoy. And now we could sit here and talk about all the things Trump does shitty, and I could do that. It won't be anything you hear in the mainstream media, but it's real shit, okay? I'm sorry to everybody listening about the baby. It just is what it is, brother. Babies cry, and my apologies. <laughs> so, but whatever this Q thing is, man, okay, I've got more information from Q than I've ever gotten from any news agency. And whatever it is, yeah. and whatever Trump represents, he has destroyed generational institutions that have taken decades, if not centuries, to build, okay? Nobody trusts the mainstream media. Nobody trusts the two-party system. Nobody tr- trusts the elites of this country. Hollywood is in shambles Um globalism's dot i mean all these things that it makes me wonder if q yeah. is a human being it, because they're like they have to be so advanced to know what the end game is mm. so either it's a human being that's doing good or it's <laughs> they got this thing called project looking glass where they can see into the future or they can see back in time wow so they ha- they could have a, a, a something to, now, here's something very interesting. There is always this conspiracy that Hillary used Project Looking Glass to see into the future, and she couldn't see past 2012. Now, mm. in some calendars, brother, the year is right now 2012. Wow. Okay? Uh-oh. Are you serious? Yeah, there are calendars that's 2012. Whoa. Oh, wow. Or I don't like to hear that's kind of nervous because didn't the Mayans say that shit happens in 2012? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's also dude the third option, which is yeah. Q is a giant AI that's played out every scenario and they're playing the game on what scenario works out for whoever is running the program, which mm. I don't understand. Yeah, but make no doubts about it. If Hillary was in office, things would be way worse we just wouldn't be hearing about it mm. you know what like, back to what you said the more he kept saying fake news fake news at first it was kind of a joke like ah, eh, fake news and then and then you do start seeing stuff where like news organizations apologize for editing footage and yeah and i saw I something mean, about like a line in detroit at a hospital yeah and they, they said they created it to kind of show how it normally is but yeah, it's just it. I found that to be a little bit interesting, you know, for I someone who's not really into politics. Yeah. If you still yeah. watch the mainstream media, if you watch MSNBC, CNN, and guess what, Fox News too. I don't know how Fox News suddenly became the <laughs> the the light of truth. I mean, dude, like in the early two thousands, if you told people, if you went back in time and go, guess what they do in twenty twenty. They think Fox News is a voice of reason. People <laughs> would be laughing. Okay? So don't yeah. bring me. Just, this is what happens is that Fox News is just on the side that's right right now. They go what? back and forth. CNN's always wrong, by the way, always. Yeah. MSNBC and Fox News go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Somebody asked me what, um, and I don't even know what this is, Obamagate. It was trending, I guess, Obamagate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obama- is that going to happen, or is that just like people putting weird stuff out there? Uh, Obamagate. what happened was at some point the, uh, the globalists realized that it wasn't a surefire win mm. that Hillary is going to win 2016, okay? Wow. And just to put in perspective how epic – epic the um the loss that hillary is she picked her opponent she had all the media on her side she had all hollywood on her side she had all the celebrities on her side she was basically had all the news agencies on her side she was getting the questions for the debate up oh i remember that with that lady donna or something maybe yeah yeah and and she still lost now, people say, dude, she won the popular vote. She won New York and she won California. But she didn't win the, the election because we have a system that allows the smaller states to be able to compete. It, and basically, it's affirmative action for voting, basically. 
mm. it allows the little guys a chance to uh, compete. So, you know, she had all that on her side and she took an L. Wow. And uh, Obama Gate is basically, there's a lot of things involved in it. But uh, Obama Gate is basically at some point they realized that they were, they were starting to get nervous that Trump might actually mm-hmm. pull this out. So Obama basically asked the intelligence services agencies to wiretap Trump. And what they did is they put this guy called Carter, named Carter Page, who was a CIA plant, and they put him on Trump's election team. By the way, a transition team, right? It's like when you're running for president and you're in the final two, they have a transition team to ease you into office. So when you get there, you, you hit the ground running. Um, so they put Carter Page. Now, just understand that Carter Page was also on uh, Bill Clinton's transition team. Uh, and he, for, uh, for whatever reason, the FBI and the CIA dubbed him as a guy that had some unsavory connections, according to reports, with mm. Russia. And they plant him on um, on. Trump's uh, transition team. Now, just to give you a little historical background, it's not even that far back. If you remember during the 2016 election, uh, during the, the 2015 Democratic primaries, uh, the DNC had accused Bernie Sanders of uh, stealing data from the DNC, and they said he could no longer get the data. Well, what happened was that Bernie Sanders came out and goes, the guy that did that is the guy that Hillary recommended or excuse me, that the DNC recommended that I use. And what we later found out is that Hillary Clinton actually was running the DNC, and she she purposely put him on Bernie's team so that at some point she could pull this card and screw him and get him out of uh, the primary because she totally rigged it. And that's kind of what started the, you know, that's what people don't realize is that tinfoil hat was started because Bernie Sanders got kneecapped by the DNC. Later, we now he just takes a knee and he's just totally full of shit. But back then, <laughs> yeah. and he probably was full of shit then too, but they most likely either threatened him with throwing his wife in jail or beat the shit out of the guy. It could be either one. We don't know. Wow. So so real quick. So, so we, Hillary had a history of putting plants on her uh, political opponents that she's running against. So fast forward, Trump is now... Uh, gaining steam uh, with the, and I think he was leading the whole time. Just nobody would tell Hillary that she had a bunch of yes people. So uh, Carter Page was used as a reason to um, to uh, to wiretap Trump. Now they also now it's recently come out and admitted in court that uh, 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 that John Podesta admitted that the DNC and Hillary Clinton. Funded the 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 steel do, uh, dossier or do, dossier, uh, which was then given by John McCain to BuzzFeed, and which they released, acting like they had inside information. Which then mm. the the uh, FBI or the CIA or the FBI used went to the FISA court, and then used as an infra, as a reason why they should get the wiretap. Was like, look, they're already reporting on it, but they're the ones who put that out. So they got the FISA court gave them a right under because they lied to the FISA court, uh, a right to basically wiretap a, a, a guy running for the president. What makes this worse than Watergate is that Obama and the team continued to wiretap Trump after he was already in election elected Whoa. in hopes of unseating him because in some weird way they thought they could shoehorn uh, uh, Hillary Clinton or they trusted Mike Pence more than they trusted Trump. And they did that up to the moment he took uh, oath. And wow. that's what, that is what Obama gate is that o- uh, Barack Obama wiretapped an elected president. Wow. So if they investigate that, who knows if it'll the truth will ever come out, but if it does, well, the truth is out. Yeah, the truth is out. The, will it result in yeah. Barack Obama being arrested? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, someone's gonna fall, 
But what this does is kill the Russian narrative right. completely. And what will lead to is basically everyone will find out that uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz put a hit out on Seth Rich and had him murdered. What about um, Joe Biden? What's up with him? When I see Joe Biden, I, I just I feel like the guy should not be running for president. I, I, he just oh, seems he a little. He's not going. I, I would be very yeah. surprised. You know, um, he, he can barely string a sentence together. And, yeah, and that's I, I, being done on yeah. purpose. To uh, that's he that's being done. So, what what Hillary wants is to be able to run for president without allowing people to discuss her running for president. Mm. So, what's going to happen is they're going to, in my opinion, and I, I'm not saying this 100 for facts going to happen, but I got a kind of a spider sense that somebody's going to step in. Oh, so uh, which is a big reason why these Democratic governors are fucking <laughs> over their states to show that they they're willing to do anything for the elites. Uh, so it's either going to be Cuomo, Governor Newsom, the governor of Michigan. I think Hillary might walk in uh, and try to get in the last second so they can't better like they did last time. Or do you think uh, it'll be Biden and then he'll he'll choose a VP and then he'll get that's possible too, and then he'll step down and then the VP will be the he's president. He's gonna get annihilated by Trump in these debates. He's going to get killed, and it's not even going to be fun to watch. <laughs> I, want, I wonder if, um, if, they'll, if things will be set up in such a way that it doesn't matter what happens during a debate, they'll, the, they'll, somebody will rig an election. I, I, oh, I, yeah, they're going to try. You know. I'm going to be honest with you, Dan, uh, yeah. Darren. I don't think – I think very few elections are real. Yeah. I, I think th- it's been a long con on us. For a very long time. Do you think that last one was real? Because everyone seemed to be so shocked when, remember all the, the, you've seen the montages where, yeah, and then people are like, no, I mean, that was, I'm going to get, I'm going to tell you something, man. There was something very interesting. And I knew when I heard it, what it meant. And I said it out loud to everybody. Uh, There was a time where Comey was discussing the emails. Now the psyop is Mm. being told that, uh, uh, the psyop is that um, Benghazi is about uh, emails, and it's it is, but it's really not. The real psyop is that Hillary and Obama basically let J. Christopher uh, J. J. Something. Oh, J. Christopher Stevens. They left him out to dry and uh, be killed by ISIS because he knew that Obama, John McCain, and Hillary created, funded, and armed, trained uh, ISIS. So they let wow. him die out there. They cover up a loose end. But the, the very interesting thing about that, that Comey's testimony, and he, he basically said that Hillary's emails, uh, one email went to a server. They didn't know where it went. And that's 100% bullshit because we later found out it was going to, and I knew as soon as he said it, it meant China and because that, that email went to a Chinese shipping company. And if we know anything about China, it's communism and they own everything. So Hillary Clinton was sending in real time private government documents to the Chinese uh, government. And when I believe, that there are people in our intelligence service when they discovered that flip the fuck out mm. and position Trump to uh, go against her. So what you had was a bad, bad man, the CIA being dealt with by another bad man, which is uh, military intelligence or the NSA. And there's a lot of discussion that Edward Snowden is full of shit and he's just there to try to take out the NSA. Mm. So, that, that that's a deeper conversation. Okay, couple more things, then we'll wrap it up. Uh, um, you know what? I, I find this fascinating. Um, the shooting in Las Vegas that it just kind of went away. It was the news yeah. for about a week, and then it's just you never hear about it. And it was well, such because a- it fell apart, and that's yeah. The internet got away from them, dude. Okay, it got away from them, and that's the same thing with this 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 um virus like they they had a whole plan and it crashed and burned and like we're living in the greatest time of journalism and it's the best time ever for information 
and they can't compete with it. Now you see all these old neocons coming back like Henry Kissinger. They're bringing them back because they think they got some kind of magic that these new like elites can't get anything going because those old, those old neocons never had to deal with the internet like it is now. And you have so many independent journalists, researchers, they can't compete. The, the news can't compete. It doesn't move fast enough. I, I, it makes my, my uh, you know, some of my buddies, we talked about it. We're like, do you think there was always like some weird fake news happening? We just didn't know growing up in the 70s the and time. 80s. I'm sure there was, right? Come on. All the time, dude. That, starting with the, 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 um, the, uh, the Kennedy assassination, the Gulf of Tonkin. Those were all lies and yeah. we can just keep going and the last time someone really paid a price these politicians is the, is the iran contra affair and they made oliver oliver north take the fucking uh fall for george bush who flooded the ghettos with yeah. crack to fund black ops most it's- likely dude in the last since jfk we've had three gay presidents i'd say two gay presidents and two bisexual presidents really you think yeah. is that what they're saying out there yeah uh george bush senior and barack obama and then um then you had the bisexual ones which were jfk and uh i believe bill clinton is the andy dick of the um <laughs> of the white house wow I mean, I, I, was, I remember reading some stories where he, def, he definitely was kind of a horn dog, right? He'd go jogging and he he'd just, see some like, girl. People don't realize when over he here. Epstein yeah. uh, victims testified, they said tr- Bill Clinton never fooled around with them. He only fooled around with boys and nobody ever said anything about it. Man, that is wild. What are you eating there? What do you got there? Dude, I made spaghetti. I, oh. I'm trying to start cooking. And for me... Spaghetti's cooking. I'm not good at it at all. Oh, I no, got to start. Oh, it's so it's funny. My wife made spaghetti last week, and I hadn't had it. We hadn't made spaghetti in years, and it was so good, man. Like, yeah, I, I love cooking. If I was better at it, I'd do it more. I know. It's uh, – man. Oh, I got a quick question about your microphone. What microphone do you go with? You sound really this clear. This is a Yeti. A Yeti. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'd like to get – you know, once everything calms down, I'd like to turn our – either my garage – or our spare room into a uh, into a uh, podcasting room for my house. You know, I yeah. have my own studio, but I like to be at home with the kids and the family. Do you? Uh, uh, where's your? Is your studio? Is that the, is that a newer studio? You, you yeah, put up in the last couple. Yeah, of years? I have a new studio. Yeah. Got it. Me and uh, my buddy went looking. He found one for super cheap. I love mm. it. And I'd be there more if there wasn't for this bullshit. But it yeah. is what it is. You know. Cause I know you were, you were recording your stuff over at uh, all things comedy and then are yeah. you still, are you still over there? Yeah. I'm with all things comedy. I just wanted to get my own studio so I could record whenever I want. That's right. That's great, man. And then, and then you'll do something in your home and is, uh, cause I just got like this, this, uh, just some mic, you know, it's like 30 bucks, but I'm wondering if I should go with that Yeti. Is that, is that a USB? I love connection? the Yeti. Uh, it sounds better. And you know what, man, you never go wrong investing in, in your internet. And that's making right. it better. I see your green screen. Yep. That's fu- That's great. And like Darren, trust me, man. It's just gonna take that one <laughs> thing, and you're gonna, yeah. You know, you're super entertaining. You're super positive, and it's just a matter of time. You just remember, <laughs> everybody started slow and then blew up. It's just gonna take time, and you'll get to where you want to go, and you're already getting there. And just think about where you were a year ago, and it's just gonna keep growing. I believe in you, dude. Man, I, I appreciate you, Sam. Do you, you know what? It's funny. Our buddy Sam, uh, our buddy Steve Simone, he got me into, um, you know, a couple of years back. We were talking about gratitude lists, and I, and I, I swear to God, I, it's like I do those gratitude, and I, I have such gratitude for the things that I have. And he, and uh, and I love that he's been doing these gratitude lists, like lockdown edition. And there's something about being thankful for the little things, you know, and, and oh, like yeah, you said, for sure. you know, when you look into your baby's eyes and when I look into my son's face and it's just like, man, that's, it, it's, you just thankful little people, man. you know, little- <laughs> you, you're going to trip out one day when your kids start doing things that you can't do. You're like, wow. Like, 
when my son memorized all these numbers for pi, like 3.14159, or when he started like, like, uh, you know, just, uh, he got his black belt in Taekwondo or, or like singing, like he can sing. Hold on. Your kid's got black belt already. <laughs> yeah. Holy I mean, he, shit. He's 12. He's been doing it since he was, uh, you know, I think four years old, you know, they, you know, it's super, you know, my wife takes him all the time and except for the, during the pandemic, but it's like, those little things that the kids do that you're like, what the hell? Like now it's great. Do you know what he's doing? He's going through puberty. So his voice is changing. So he's constantly experimenting with how low he can make his voice go. It's so adorable. He's like, dad, I just hit an F2 or whatever it's called. You know, he's like, That's yeah. cool. well, I'm very blessed. I didn't know at my age, I would, I would ever have kids, you know, but the Lord works in strange and mysterious ways. And for some reason, God gave these two little girls a wolf for a father. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I'm i so thankful. I love my life. You know, kid, two kids at once is a little chaotic. The mom I mean, has to deal with me. I'm a crazy person. You know what's great, though? If, if we were to have an, you know, uh, a little thankful attitude of gratitude is, I mean, at least right now, you can't go on the road, even if you wanted to. So you, you So it's great to be there with the daughters, you know, like, like it's it's a struggle sometimes. Like let's say there was no lockdown, and and you're getting you know, hey Sam, you want to make you know a lot of money to fly over here and go over there, and you're and you're it's like a a, a strange feeling to be like I love you babies, and then you got to be on the road. Now it's like you're getting to taking those moments with your yeah, kids. Yeah, it's man. like you know what, Darren. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think this is week is the first time I miss stand up, you know, and I've been doing it for 25 years. And I was starting to be like, I'm just going up on stage because that's what I've always done. I'm not really doing it because, you know, I want to. I mean, I love doing it, but I was doing it because I have to. And I, I'm really happy to have time off. And, you know, I, I don't know how much I'll go back into just doing spots in L.A. I don't I don't. I don't want to do that. I mean, I want to do some stuff on the road where I could do more time and, and I entertain my, my crowd, what little one I have. I'd like to do that, but be honest with you, dude. I, I, like I, that doesn't appeal to me anymore. I've really found a lot of fun in just doing podcasting and YouTube, you know, live streaming. Like, you know, I, I, I just, I don't I, – I, I'm feeling a disconnect somewhat between me and what the crowd wants here. They want patty cakes, and I just want to scorch the earth. And, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a little bit of punk rock is dead in this society that we have right now. Uh, you know, so it's like interesting. But when I go play Tim Paul Hat crowds, they know exactly what they're going to get, and they they love it, and I'm thankful. And it's like to be this long, to go this long without – you know, I've been on my own, do my own thing for so long. Uh, it's it's very cool. I, I enjoy, I enjoy, just, I'm not a clown, dude. That's my hardest problem. I'm really not a clown. I don't want to be a clown. I'm not somebody who who's desperate. And like, dude, there's some guys who are so lightning fast and they're funny. That's just not me, man. And I used to feel really bad that I wasn't that guy that, you know, just was like, yeah, ha, ha, hey, hey, ha, and everything it was like a, a million. And like, I just don't care. Sometimes I just really want to have like a serious conversation. And if we go and right. forever without a laugh, so be it, dude. But I'm not a clown. You know, there, I, I used to think comics break down into two things, uh, clowns and shit talkers. But I've also decided that there's outlaws, too, that just don't care about <laughs> anybody accepting what they're doing they just want to do them and that's kind of where i am right now i'm not even a shit talker i'm a, i'm more of an outlaw and i just really don't care who likes what i have to say anymore i actually enjoy getting people a little pissed off it, it's an old <laughs> thing it's like yeah i got that from J patrick ewing and the georgetown hoyas of the 80s man i just watched them walk into arenas and people booing and i'm like, i used to love i'm like dude that's gotta feel so good to like just <laughs> like at first that's what i wanted to do in comedy i came when everybody was trying to be fucking seinfeld and i just right. wanted to go up there and just fucking start a riot and i still got that but now you know 
everybody's kind of gotten like along the lines, even though I'm not politically correct and I won't ever be politically correct. I think that's for children, but uh, you know, I, I like just doing Tim fall hat crowds to be honest with you. For those, for the comedians that, that are listening and uh, you know, they, they might have that, that fear of like, I want to put my opinions out, but I don't want to get, you know, the industry not to book me. Like, do, do, did, did that used to cross your mind or does it well, cross I, your mind I anymore? Very or early. You just, yeah. Darren, that I was not part of the cool kids mm. ever. I'm never, if it wasn't for Mitzi showing the comedy store, I would have done nothing in Hollywood. Uh, I'm eternally grateful to them. Uh, I was rejected a long time ago and I've uh, been just like a street kid, dude, just grinding on my own. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm at an age where I can, uh, I can take advantage of the internet that's available because back like 20 years ago, if, if you didn't fit what they wanted, good luck ever working, dude. There was right. no avenue and it got worse and worse, you know, as the, as the industry got stronger and stronger, they started putting strangleholds early 2000s. It was about the nerds. Then it became chick comedy. Then it became diversity. And they ruined everything. Uh, you know, comedy is like sports, dude. It's like you got to get results or it ain't happening. And they were putting out a shit product. <laughs> yeah. And there was a bunch of unfunny people in the industry creating content. And they wouldn't know comedy if it fucked them in their ass. And <laughs> we had to kowtow to these people. Yeah. Th those days are done. And uh, I've, I, you know, I started the Naughty Show a long time ago because I wanted to do dirty comedy when you couldn't do dirty comedy. So I started doing dirt and Naughty Show. And that should have been on television, but these suits wanted nerds. And then they wanted chicks. And it was neither of those. So... Then I kind of like feel like the naughty show did its thing. You start seeing dirty comedy everywhere. And I'm not saying it's because of me, but there are people like, you know, Stan Hope and Natal and Joey Diaz and Rogan were doing it. But the naughty show was a big part of that as well. And then, um, so then I got into conspiracies. And now conspiracies are popping off everywhere. And I'm not saying it's only Tim Foyle Hat, but Tim Foyle Hat is a part of um, that whole thing. And, I, I got a pirate ship, dude, and I enjoy having a pirate. I enjoy raiding people once in a while. I love killing trolls on Twitter. They don't realize <laughs> there's a, a fucking, I've committed genocide against hecklers. There's a <laughs> fucking graveyard of fucking dead hecklers in the back of the comedy store. And uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is, you know, so I enjoy it. But outside of that, dude, it's like uh, I've never been happier. And, you know, once in a while, you know, like everything, I kind of, you know, get like, yeah. what am I doing with my life? But at the end of the day, I'm very happy. I think the young comic who started would be very happy with who I am today. Beautiful, man. Sam, thanks for hopping on. I'd love to have you back. And uh, thanks for talking with us, man. And, and uh, you know, now, now we have a guy to go to and some – Crazy stuff happens in the news. I got a guy I know. Oh, last question. Somebody wants to know, where do you find out information about your conspiracies? Do you, if, do you have a couple places that maybe people could dig into where they could go? Yeah, I mean, there's some great researchers out there, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I look at a bunch of different places. I don't look at the news. The only thing I look at the news is like if all the news is reporting on one thing, it's probably there's something going on. Mm. All right. Uh, I go to uh, Reddit conspiracies. I go to, um, I, there's like people I follow uh, on the uh, Twitter. Twitter. Twitter threads are the greatest source of news now. Oh. Uh, and there's some great people like Whitney Webb, James Corbett, David Icke. These are wonderful independent journalists who say wonderful things. There's great podcasts out there like uh, Sword and Scale. Um, uh, uh, higher side chats, those conspiracy guys, um, uh, Grimerica, I, uh, you know, conspiracy farms that are just wonderful researchers. And there's so much independent journalism going on that you don't need the news. Right. And that's kind of where I go. And then, you know, it's like, I just, I just know that these very powerful people are, are living off our, our, our misery. So I know what to look for and I just look for it. <laughs>
Sam, you're the best, man. Thanks for being a part of the Pocket Party Podcast. And and uh, much love to you and your family. And uh, congratulations on the daughters. And thanks for hanging out with us. Anytime, all the time, Darren. You're one of my favorite people. You grind. Good things are going to are gonna keep. The blessings are going to keep coming for you. And I'm super happy. And anytime I could be on your podcast, I'd love to do it. Thank you, brother. Lo- lots thanks of love, man. Me, dude. See you. Thank you. We're done with this interview. So when my son was about... 10 years old, I remember he came into the kitchen and he goes, Hey mom, how many pounds do you weigh? She goes, you never ask a woman how many pounds. And he thought about it and he goes, How many tons? (laughs) I said, this kid's funny. I gotta write that down. Anyways, I'm gonna write some more jokes down. And while I'm doing that, you guys click one of these bubbles and watch another one of my videos. And thanks again for subscribing. Thank you. Pocket party!